Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman. We turn now to the burgeoning scandal around voter profiling company Cambridge Analytica. Startling revelations show the company harvested the data of more than 50 million Facebook users, without their permission, in efforts to sway voters to support President Donald Trump. Cambridge Analytica was founded by billionaire Robert Mercer. Trump's former advisor, Steve Bannon of Breitbart News, was one of the company's key strategists. The Facebook data was first obtained by a Cambridge University academic named Alexander Kogan, whose company, Global Science Research, built an app that paid Facebook users to take a personality test and agree to have their data collected. The app also collected data on these users' friends, meaning it actually collected personal information from tens of millions of users without their knowledge. Cambridge Analytica then bought this data in order to turn a voter profiling company into a powerful psychological tool, which began launching targeted political ads aimed at carrying out Robert Mercer's far-right political agenda. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg broke his silence on the issue Wednesday, telling CNN he's sorry his company allowed Kogan to access the data. So this was a major breach of trust, and, and I'm really sorry that this happened. Um, you know, we have a basic responsibility to protect people's data. And if we can't do that, then, then we don't uh, deserve to have the opportunity to serve people. So our responsibility now is to make sure that this doesn't happen again. This comes as an American professor filed a legal challenge in Britain, asking the court to force Cambridge Analytica to disclose how it came up with the psychographic targeting profile it had on him. David Carroll is an associate professor of media design at Parsons School of Design. He's filed a claim to force Cambridge Analytica to turn over all of the data it harvested, it, all the data it harvested on him. Well, for more, we're joined by Professor David Carroll. Welcome to Democracy Now. It's great to be here. Thank you. So, explain what you are demanding. Uh, full disclosure. So, where did they get our data? How did they process it? Who did they share it with? And do we have a right to opt out? So the basic uh, rights that I think a lot of people would like to have and the basic questions that a lot of people are asking. Explain Cambridge Analytica to people who are sitting here and saying, what is this company? Is it based here? Is it based in Britain? And why you chose to file in Britain? So we don't know exactly what this company is. Uh, it's quite ambiguous, but what we know for sure is when I requested my data from the company in the January of 2017, it arrived from SCL Group, a military contractor, and that was very unsettling. Uh, so it's been a process of sharing the data so that I could get advice. And when I learned that the data was probably not complete and probably not compliant to UK law, that's when I got myself a lawyer, Ravi Naik. And explain how you have standing in Britain. So it was really interesting. Uh, the House of Commons committee that's been investigating this uh, the chair of the committee, Damien Collins, asked the information commissioner about my case specifically in Parliament and asked, why does she have standing on my case? And she replied, Elizabeth Denham, the information commissioner, she replied, because Cambridge Analytica processed David Carroll's data in the UK, the information commissioner has jurisdiction and the UK Data Protection Act applies. And the, the, the act does not exclude by citizenship. It only is, um, you know, on, only has authority when you can prove that your data has been processed. And we did that back in March. The data was reportedly harvested by a Cambridge, that's Cambridge, England, Cambridge professor, Alexander Kogan. Who is Kogan? Uh, so he is among the three uh, researchers at the Psychometrics Center at Cambridge University who developed the psychometrics technique, along with Mikhail Kaczynski, who's now at Stanford, and David Stilwell, who is uh, also still at University of Cambridge. And uh, those two other uh, academics did not decide to join the company that ultimately provided SCL with the data. <laughs> So let's turn to the former White House chief strategist, Steve Bannon, who worked with Cambridge Analytica. Bannon was speaking with Financial Times editor Lionel Barber.
data from Facebook is just about the cost of it. That data is out there. There's a marketplace for your data. It's bought and sold every day. Yeah, but the people it's didn't know it was being leaked. The, that's the, a, that's, the that's, the difference. that's the issue between Cambridge, the professor, and Facebook. And by the were way, there's an open... Were you aware of that? Were, were you aware no, of that leak? Did, you did, didn't. I did, didn't, even know about, it didn't even know about the Facebook and mining. In, but in, hang on, but hang on, hang yeah. on. The point is, that is Facebook's business. In 2008, it was Google and Facebook that went to Barack Obama and met him in San Francisco Airport and told him all about the power of this personal data. In 2012, and we have the, we have the uh, woman who headed up Data Integrity said, hey, Facebook gave us the information because they were quote unquote on our side. So the great opposition party, media, never went after the Obama campaign, never went after the progressive left as they've been doing this for years. So that is uh, President Trump's former chief strategist, Breitbart News, Cambridge Analytica. Respond to what he just said. Well, he's leaving out an important fact, that Facebook did not activate the feature called custom audiences, which allows campaigns to upload voter data right into Facebook to target people individually by name until October, October 23rd, 2013, well after Obama's second campaign. So the Facebook tools to target people were simply not available during those campaigns. Well, let me go to Carol Davidson, who served as Obama's campaign director of integration and media analytics during the 2012 campaign. In this video, posted online in 2015, she described how the campaign used Facebook. The Obama campaign just did this uh, on a digital, in a digital level, on a much lar larger level, but we were actually able to ingest the entire social network, social network of the U.S. Uh, that's on Facebook, which is most, pe most people. Uh, where this gets complicated is that freaks Facebook out, right? So they shut off the feature. Well, the Republicans never built an app to do that. So the data is out there. You can't take it back, right? So the Democrats have this information. Uh, so when they look at a voter file and someone comes to them, they can immediately be like, oh, here are all the other people that they know, and here are people that they can help us persuade because they're really good friends with, with this person. The Republicans do not have that information and will not get that information. So that was Carol Davidson, Obama campaign's director of integration and media analytics during the 2012 campaign, speaking in 2015. Well, on Sunday, she wrote on Twitter, quote, Facebook was surprised we were able to suck out the whole social graph, but they didn't stop us once they realized that was what we were doing. They came to office in days following election recruiting and were very candid that they allowed us to do things they wouldn't have allowed someone else to do because they were on our side. Mm. Professor Powell, Professor Carroll. Well, I mean, I think this is a wake-up call for everyone about the data that we've been leaking all over the place ever since the internet became a commercial aspect of our lives. So, um, it's one thing to collect data, and it's another thing to be able to target people and target people individually. So, there's a lot of complicated issues here, but I think the uh, this whole Cambridge Analytica crisis has uh, created a potential tipping point where we're going to have new attitudes about letting our data leak all over the place and try to recapture control of it. I want to turn to an interview Mark Zuckerberg uh, did back in 2009 with BBC. So who is going to own the Facebook content, the person who puts it there or you? The, the person who's putting the content on Facebook always owns the information, and that's why this is such an important thing, and, and why Facebook is such a special service that people feel a lot of ownership over. Right? This is their information; they own it. And you uh, they, won't sell they it. They often want to. No, of course not. This is their information; they own it. David Carroll. Well, you can try to download your data from Facebook, and you can see what they think your data is. And it is not complete and not even close to the amount of data that they have on all of us who are on Facebook. So what Facebook would really need to do is to let us download what is known as the shadow profile, which is the profile that Facebook has assembled about us that we don't know about. And I'm interested to see what happens uh, in the near future, especially after my legal challenge in London runs its course, is Facebook going to be forced eventually to disclose the shadow profile it has on all of us and shows us how it's collecting our information across all of our devices, across multiple apps like Instagram and WhatsApp. And when people can actually see the extent of the surveillance, I think they're going to be shocked. And your thoughts on Zuckerberg's apology? 
I'm not sure it was a full apology. And uh, there are still so many unanswered questions that I'm waiting for reporters to ask him. Like? Like, why did they work side by side with Cambridge Analytica at Pascal's uh, company in San Antonio at the peak of the summer of 2016 and allowed Cambridge Analytica to upload voter data into Facebook when they knew years prior that this was a company that they had to revoke access to for violating their terms of service. So why did they work with a company so intimately and share data across the firms when they knew they were dealing with a potentially bad actor? Well, David Carroll, are you still on Facebook? We have to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David Carroll, associate professor at Parsons School of Design. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.